We're making a modern style background for a report or app today. I'm using the free version of Figma. And by background, what I mean is if we take the visuals off of this report page, what we're making looks like this. This design is inspired by the new OpenAI website look and feel. So that would be this one here, but we're gonna put our own spin on it. If you're looking to follow along with the exact same data model, I have another video on how we set up these visualizations that includes even the Excel files for the data sources. So I'm gonna link that in the video description. This video is gonna be all about the background. So essentially when we're looking at this design. What this boils down to is some shapes on a neutral background that are very blurry. This sounds stupid because it kind of is. When you see what is going on behind this, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to show you how to do this step by step using Figma. But if you want to skip the tutorial and just get the background image that was used in that report, I'm going to include it in the channel membership files. Okay. All right. So in Figma, the first thing we want to do is create a new frame. A frame is a container that holds your objects. So that's this hash mark icon in the toolbar here. We're going to select that and then we're going to make a box. The size of the box doesn't matter so much. We're going to change that in a minute. I'm going to rename this to something more descriptive. So this frame has dimensions. What we want is for the dimensions to match the aspect ratio that Power BI uses by default. So that's 16 by nine typically, which comes out to in pixels, 1280 by 720. All right, here's our box. So the design that I like has a gradient background that is kind of a soft blue that fades to white. So if we scroll down on this right-hand sidebar, there's a fill color here. If you select the color, you get a pop-up that lets you choose your color or set it to a gradient. So gradient is the second icon here. For our top color, I'm gonna pick kind of a soft blue. as like maybe this one here. And then we're gonna fade it to a gray that's so light that it almost looks white like that. And if I close this color box, you can see that we get a control over the size and the color of the gradient. So you can change directions on this thing if you want to. I'm gonna leave mine straight up and down. I'm gonna drag this color down a little bit just so that the color fills a little bit more of that top section. So next comes the shapes. So what you can do here is kind of overlay multiple regular shapes, kind of like ovals and circles, or you can do blobs. So blob shapes are easier because you need less of them to make something that's kind of regularly irregular. So if you don't wanna DIY your blobs, you can just go to this actions menu down here in the toolbar and under plugins and widgets search blob. Somebody has made a plugin that creates random blobs. So if we select that, we get a little blob creator window. So you can change the complexity and the uniqueness and insert a few different shapes. So I'm just gonna add a few different ones and then I'm going to change the colors of them. So the exact placement and size of these blobs doesn't really matter. You can move them around and play with them a bit later, but just get five or six in there, maybe something like that. All right, here's our blobs. I'm gonna start changing the colors of these. So you wanna pick colors that have a little bit of contrast to them. So things that are on opposite sides of the color wheel usually work pretty well. And um, also I'm gonna pop out my UI sidebar here, and we're going to make sure that these shapes are actually in our frame. If you select all of them, holding shift to select multiple, and then find your frame and drag and drop them into it. I'm going to turn the camera off because it keeps being in the way. So I'm gonna drop these into our gradient frame. And now you can see that the edges got cut off on the top. That's what we want. So I'm gonna set some of these to kind of a blue and purple and some of them to kind of pastel orange and red. This one will make a light blue. This one will be our orange. This one more of our salmon color. Maybe another blue here. I'll just match this one. Maybe purple on this one. You can also use a gradient on some of these blobs. So for example, this one I could swap to gradient and maybe go to more of a light blue like that. And you you can maybe move it around. So here's what we're starting with. We can always add more blobs later. I want to kind of get a feel for how it's looking when I add the blur. So for the blur, what we want to do is blend all of these together. I'm going to add a shape on top of all of these. That's a rectangle that fills the whole frame like that. I'm going to make this a lighter gray. So maybe like F2, F2, F2. And then we're going to set the transparency on this to something more moderate. So maybe 20%. That's going to mute the colors a little bit, which is actually a good thing, but it's also going to keep it visible. So if you set this to zero, you won't be able to see the blur. So I'm going to set it to 20% and then we're going to add an effect. So under effects, click the plus icon. It defaults to drop shadow, just change it to background blur and then dial up the blur size. So this icon next to that drop down box will let you change the blur amount. So I'm going to set mine to say 100 and see how that looks. So that's pretty good. I feel like we could use one more shape in here. So I'm just going to copy and paste one of these, maybe this one to duplicate it and then kind of move it around until 
tell it looks good. So I'm going to maybe make this one orange, size it a little bit. So there's our blurry shapes. Now, if we want to put cards for our visuals in Power BI, we can do that too. The shapes behind the visuals are not just for looks. So they actually help your eye when you're looking at a report rest on the appropriate places. If we want to get fancy with this, we can do sort of a glass morphism effect where there's some transparency on the shapes, or you can just make them white too. Either will work. So I'm going to add some rectangles and these are going to go behind our visuals. So I'm going to kind of try and place them about where I expect the visuals to be. If you want to be precise about it, you can actually put a screenshot of your report on top of here just to figure out where to place the boxes, or you can just resize them and move them around once you've imported your background. So I'm going to do one about that size and then just copy and paste to make a new one of the same height and two more. Let's make sure these line up. There's a snap to grid helper in Figma, but what you can also do is if you hold down the alt button, it'll tell you how far apart your boxes are. So these are 37 pixels. That one's 33. So I should probably make this a little bit narrower. Good enough. And it looks like I've made these a little too tall. So we're going to go so I'm going to make these white. I'm just going to hold shift to select all of them and change the fill to white, then set them to about 20% on the fill amounts. That'll make them translucent. And then if you want to, you can add a very slight border on these. So if we add a stroke line and set it to a light gray, that's kind of a nice effect. And we can also add a drop shadow. So don't go crazy with the drop shadow, make it subtle. So if we add an effect, it will default to drop shadow. We want to dial back the color fill quite a bit. I'm going to make this like 4%. That's still too much. How about 2%? And then I'm going to increase the blur too. So from four to eight, there we go. So that's pretty subtle. All right, so we're ready to export this and import it into Power BI. So I'm going to select the frame. So click on your frame title. You need to make sure the frame is selected because if you have something else selected, it'll try and export that individual object and you don't want that. And then click on export in the right hand sidebar. And I'm going to do PNG, but I'm going to 2X it. So 2X is going to make it so that when people have larger resolutions, it's not going to be blurry because we have the edges of the boxes and that kind of thing that we want to stay sharp. If you want to optimize it, what you can do is use a tool like tiny PNG to decrease the size of the PNG files without noticeably decreasing the quality. So that'll make it load faster. So I'll export this and it went into my downloads folder. So if I wanted to use tiny PNG on this, I'll just run through this real fast. So tiny PNG is a free tool that reduces the size of PNG files. So if you just drag and drop this on to the window, it'll give you an optimized size. This is something that web developers used to use all the time. They probably have a way to automate that at this point, but so you can see it's 71% smaller. I'm going to download that and then we're going to import that in Power BI. All right, so I've got my visuals in Power BI. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want a walkthrough step-by-step -step of how to make these visuals, I have a tutorial on exactly how to do that, including the data sources for it. So all I did here was I took the output from that tutorial and I changed the primary color from a teal to a navy blue. And I decreased the line size of this line chart from like two or three to one. And same thing with the border on this card. And the one other thing I did was add a border around the gray bars on this chart because the gray kind of blended in a little bit too much so you couldn't see where the bar was. So that's the only difference. So now I'm gonna import our image. So what we're gonna do is click on the white space in Power BI behind your visuals, make sure you have nothing selected and then go to the visualizations tab, go to the format your report page under canvas background. So click on browse, select your image, and then it'll look like it's not doing anything, but we need to do is turn off the transparency. So set it to zero and then change your image fit from normal to fit. Then we want to rearrange these so that they fit in the boxes. And the other thing that you want to do is to make sure that your view is set to fit to width so that when people have different screen sizes, everything fits on the page properly. So I'm going to finish moving these around like so. We're going to go to the view tab of the ribbon and then go to page view and make sure this is either set to fit to width or fit to page. So the difference between fit to width and fit to page is that fit to width, if it's taller than the available space, you'll have a scroll bar. Fit to page will scale everything down to your screen size. If your aspect ratio is 16 by 9, usually you want fit to page. So what that'll do is when somebody has a different screen size, like for example, if I shrink this down, you see how it still fits within the available boundaries? So nothing shifts around, it just gets smaller. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to add, the visuals, I'll have the background turned off. So there's a setting in here if you select one of these two, if you search in the configuration for background. So it's under effects, the background is turned off on all of these, otherwise you'd have white behind them, which wouldn't look very good. There is no transparency 
fee for the matrix columns and rows as of this point in time. That's why this one is still white, but the rest of them you can set to be a transparent background. All right, so I'm going to link the other video where we make this data model on the end screen. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.